Okay, so um, I'm just gonna share. So you probably have seen already this. So this is your, I think that is um, the training. Like that's basically the entire uh, thing that you would, you would need mostly. Just so if you need anything, you would see here just from the outline, you know, the overview, what kind of competencies we are finally measuring, taking all the data and trying the portfolio contributions that you think, uh, you know, working on this project, what it would give you. And of course, the data and the features that um, you, that are kind of provided. And then the team behind instructions, the most important thing to perform you day to day. And then the marking rubrics basically are what earlier someone asks, what's the kind of the waiting, so you will get you will get at the waiting. And then the tutorial schedule, this also makes it easy for you to get what are the tutorials, what are the topics, as well as also like kind of, you know, uh, when. So this basically would give you all the um, tutorials. And then the deliverables are important because this is what we expect you to deliver. Again, these ones, there will be a link submission and a Google class that you would provide. So, so you would basically provide um, in Google class the basically your submission. It should be easy. I think you know, we'll get the hang of it. It's very simple. You just basically, if it is, most of the time, if it's GitHub, you just put your, your link. You know, submission basically is like, if it's a report, you basically have either a Google document, a Google link, or a PDF, or a blog, that a medium blog, you basically, again, just it's either a link or a PDF you upload, okay? And then what leaderboard updates and references. So, and we will also, you will get your grades, uh, your feedback, mostly from our system. It's called the 10 system you will be added in the 10x system if not already and you will get, you will be given uh, basically a, a login that you would use and in that of course when you when you just get in it's empty but over time as we accumulate more data about you you will be able to see feedbacks including your competencies uh, radar plots where you are in the, in the different we have 11 or 12 competencies that we're measuring you would see basically uh, your progress along those ones and then also you will receive, um, you know, some of some missions that we um, we found very exceptional. We share it for everyone to see so that they see what we mean by ex you know exceptional work and all that you know, and including also where you stand in terms of contributions because you have to know we are we we do what we show you what we train you. That means we do really data like um, probably one of the few trainers who would really consume all your data and put it as a feedback. Both automated, when you submit a GitHub link, we will automatically um, basically parse it and analyze it. We do some data analysis in that, and then we will provide, including your relative rank based on, for example, the number of lines in your code, based on the classes, you know, how strong you are, how the complexity of your code, whatever will be provided, that one will be also available um you know in the in the 10x so you, we try to exactly analyze everything your gmit uh, even your current gmit would be analyzed you know who is kind of who's and again mostly for understanding your participation but also mostly to predict whether you will be you know like you, if the upload and download are like that we try to understand that just so that if we can give you some feedback on that that would also be useful but a lot of the data almost 100% of your data is used to give you feedback, not for anything. We don't sell data. So it's much more for our analysis such that we provide a very basically um, personalized feedback uh, in all of the things. And you will see in 10X as well, you can actually comment and you will have a direct access to tutors to basically you know, complain if the assessment of your assignment is not right and stuff. So you know, the system will, will help us to basically bring Again, this is most of the, the things are under development. So you are, of course, you should contribute, you should give us feedback in the system, you should give us feedback in anything, including this challenge document, if something is not clear, because it's that that is kind of 
you know, paid forward is not only in, in a finance sense, but paid forward is like basically whatever your feedback to strengthen the assessment or to strengthen the program will benefit another person as well. Okay, so with that said, what is really uh, the case is that so this uh, is a pre-training assessment, we call it week zero. And in the week zero, the project is uh, based on machine learning engineering, uh, machine learning um, task. And this will be a lot more uh, Twitter analysis, but in itself, it contains multiple tasks. But why, you know, what would you get out of it? And I think, you know, one word that I really would want you to think about, if just don't take it lightly, I will just make it, it's really a win-win. That means for us, of course, as I told you earlier, what we are doing is basically giving you a loan. You know, you can call it just um, that to be paid, right? And that loan, of course, you will pay it so that other people continue. If, and that means for us, we need to get data. The only way we measure, there is no preconceived idea who's talented. We believe that everyone talented has similar characteristics, just like any other data science believes. And those data, those characteristics are, of course, hard work. Those characteristics are discipline. Those characteristics are kind of like, you know, curiosity. So those are kind of key, you know, and, and so, we, you would show that, you demonstrate that, we will learn that so that we then know the compatibility. You might be very amazing and excellent. You might not be compatible to the program because the program may require really, you know, very intense and maybe you don't have time now or maybe, you know, you're not ready for that. So in that case, you know, for us, it's just to, there's no uh, fun in, in going along if we don't match. So you have to find, you have to find before it's too late, you have to find whether we are your match and we have to also find a way to know that you are our match. That means we are you know, investing our investment or a return on investment will be high. Return on investment for us is simply just means placing you into job. So because of that, we designed carefully in every project, especially this week zero, because some of you might not continue with us. We designed it such that even the participation in this will really help you um, to understand a number of things that you would not otherwise get anywhere else. And that means it's really a win-win situation. That means we have put the task such that you really learn the overall things that you would see in a machine learning environment. So that's why the tasks are probably more than what you could probably complete. Some of you with experience, you may complete it, but most of you will not complete it. The number of tasks are more than you actually can complete. You know, it's going to be very new for most of you, and um, and but you will see the test of it, right? You will see what is end to end. So that means this in this one week, you will be doing an end to end project that takes into account so many, you know, a number of details that are relevant in the industry setting, you know, in the enterprise setting. Okay, that being said, so we advise you actually to put as the best effort. If you don't complete, don't worry, just submit whatever you have on time because that's the most important thing. Notify things on time, and it's much more of a mindset. So really, whatever you can do, do, you know, keep your frustration. I think the most of the time that you would find here is that it is so hard to keep your frustration. It's just a lot more self-dealing. You will deal with yourself more than any, any other time because you will be frustrated sometimes. You, things will not go as you expect. And there are a number of things. You might just mood sways. You know, the community sometimes someone is much kind of going further in the stand of the update and you feel so bad. You feel maybe, you know, that you are not the right, you know, in the right place. Maybe you really lack a lot. No, all of that is just, you know, just the mind plays game to you just to quit. And I would really say just don't quit. Just continue whatever you do, uh, you know, and give your best. Basically, what can you do? You know, what, you know, measure yourself like yesterday. What were the things that didn't go well? Maybe you really struggled because you could have just asked in Slack. Make, tomorrow, don't do it. It's, you know, Arun puts it sometimes, what the 10 Academy, 10 in the 10 Academy is to really improve every day 10%. And usually you would, you would really go far um, if you just do that. So I would say really, really advise you, know that it's expected to go down in mood, to feel bad sometimes because it's a lot of things and a lot of new things. But just take the other side of it instead of the half, you know, the half empty glass, look at the half full one that you can drink. That means there's so much things you will learn, you'll be exposed that that in short amount of time, you will have the opportunity to go through. So 
as I just overemphasize, the number of tasks may be, if you are not uh, get used to it, it's new to you a lot, and you may not have time to, to build intuition, you may not have time to build knowledge, to be comfortable in the way that you may be a deep person. That means you only understand something when you really understand it. Maybe that's not a time now, you know, just adjust yourself that you may not need to understand much of it, but you may need to do it and just find a strategy. So it's all about strategy um, to go over and to move over, you know, to, to move on and not give up. So that's it. Um, and the tutors and everybody, the community, you would know, you would see that it would be helpful when you ask it. Somehow people would really have different perspective that you have never thought of that will solve your problem in 10 seconds instead of you take 10 hours. And the different concepts that will be covered in this week are, of course, Python. We expect you are you know, already demonstrated, you know Python, you know, you know, intermediate to advanced, most of you. And you would basically do everything in GitHub and you would use a lot of Git commands, um, advanced Git commands, actually. And then you would also uh, learn, kind of, will have to do it, not learn, you will actually have to perform data science process and workflows. You'd learn a little bit of about what scripts DM. It's just basically some set of kind of um, you know what the flow basically pipelines, and then you would understand some basic data engineering, data versioning, and all that. And then also within this is a crisp DM as well. Data understanding and data explorations um, using Twitter data. Twitter data is a JSON you know kind of dump, so it's not structured. So basically um, that you will be working on that. And then you would learn or you would perform, actually, you would have to demonstrate that you do some kind of continuous integration, which means basically you would keep your, your code, your data, whatever, in, in basically some kind of repository, in this case, GitHub. And then basic ML ops, that is basically machine learning operations. You know, there are dev DevOps for uh, development, you know, just, and then the software, and this is for machine learning. That means just those operations uh, that are needed to from playing, experimenting to actually deploy. So that's called ML system process design. And then you would work, of course, modeling. You would just do some topic modeling and sentiment analysis in this data. And then you would also have to deploy using, you know, serving your ML models through a dashboard, a streamlet, or any other dashboard you are. So as you could see, in one week, you go from really like data fetching, data extraction to deployment and while keeping best practices. You know, this is basically a semester course, right? It's, this thing can be your, in a, um, in a university, can be just one course in a, you know, um, of a semester. So that's why when we say it's really a lot and intensive, but you would see uh, in crazy amazingly, by the end of the first week, you, you know, by the end of this week, you really get familiar with most of them. Because it's if you were to learn it yourself, you might not, but it is a community learning. You are basically, it's parallel, you know, if you know 50 computers, if you are just using them separately, not that much. But if you really put 50 computers or 100, in this case, 133 computers together, and you really use them as one, it's just amazing the amount of uh, things you would get. It's something similar. The community learning really would provide you so much some people would learn and get you like basically what you would take personally you know 10 hours they might just give you 10 minutes or in 10 seconds even so that's why you would learn a lot and these are the type of the competencies we measure so as you can see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten of this um what they mean it's as you can see really we try to measure all of them so that means we will, we have to collect for everything what does it mean for professionalism for a global level job? It really, we need to measure your articulation in business values that we sometimes measure that based on your report uh, using rubrics. You know, are you kind of, did you understand the business? Have you articulated? Have you explained it in your blog or in your kind of um, report? And collaboration and communicating, you can see in, in Gmeet, you know, how much are you speaking? Are you kind of much more coming with a, with a community or with a kind of, uh, trying to help the community grow, uh, both in Slack, in Gmeet, and every other opportunity that you have. Um, and then software development frameworks, of course, that basically means, do you understand the kind of, you know, are you pushing your code regularly? Are you committing your code with a good, you know, message? Are you writing modular codes? You know, are you packaging them? All of that is kind of, we will measure 
we will again uh, evaluate from your submissions and Python programming. Absolutely, of course, this is key. You know, those are in SQL programming. Both of them in this week, you will also have that because in the dashboard, we ask you to do some kind of uh, to read it from uh, from a, a database and you have to create the database and populate the data in data analytics and engineering that's much more of visualization and a lot of more of data versioning transformation and you know data warehouse management ml ops and auto ml this is again just much more of thinking in terms of pipelines and data and model versioning this is uh, in deep learning and machine learning in this case you would be doing topic modeling and sentiment analysis so that's that part Web and mobile programming. Uh, this is what is kind of a proxy to your um, to your uh, dashboard, which is basically going to be mostly Streamlit or Flask or any other thing uh, that you will have. You will build. Unfortunately, we will not cover this week this one, uh, Web3 and D apps. But they, you know, whatever of that you would do in terms of um, dashboard and you know backend, frontend systems. This will help you, but right now, let me just put it this one, you will not be able to um, understand or you will not be exercising or we will not evaluate in this week, okay? So just let me put it some kind of um, like that. Okay, so the portfolio contribution, you basically can, will, will be working a lot with GitHub so that you can put a lot on GitHub, um, uh, working with GitHub and you can put, so that means basically the repository that you will create and this week you will be working you can put you can put that link as part of your demonstrating that you have you know you really work with github in an advanced level and the url to your report really will show how much you covered in you know, your understanding your reporting and everything and again the nlp as a skill you can put it ml ops as a skill you can put it streamly dashboard as a steam as a steam uh, or as a skill you can put it as well as also teamwork so all of this you can actually add in your portfolio uh, from this week's uh, effort. The data is provided um, and here. So there are two data to demonstrate an actual industry standard. In principle, had we had time, what we would have done was we ask you to create a Twitter development account and you would have to collect the data yourself. But unfortunately, uh, Twitter would take some time to give you a developer account. I will ask you, of course, it's your still apply. If you have Twitter, if you don't have Twitter, create you know Twitter account. If you, if you have, you can actually create, um, I will also add a link here, how to create uh, your developer account. You might not need it, but for the future you will need it, but that is the part. But just so that to avoid that, we have shared with you, we have pre-downloaded the data based on a topic we, we choose a topic that is currently important. In this case, it's a political context, but that political context is just the relationship between the US, China, and Taiwan due to um, you know, the Senator Pelosi's visit to Taiwan that basically uh, infuriated China. That has a global consequence. And as a data scientist, you would be asked to work on this, to try to understand what, you know, what the data is telling you, and the data comes in two formats. One is collected from basically the general population, that means globally, you know, people's perception. And another one is specifically collected to represent uh, data from Africa. So that means there is a data drift, as you can see, from a general population, you go to one continent perspective. So you would have to deal with what it means in this kind of analysis in that, in that sense. So you will use both of them. And there are some, uh, you know, below, but basically what you're trying to understand is that what is what are Africans thinking about this uh, situation and what is the you know what are the conversation about within these topics are the topics really collected with these keywords are they actually representative how much of the you know uh, noise is there because you know China Taiwan crisis maybe just somebody uses it for to advertise food you know we know it we have seen it over and over so it's up to you, it's your creativity, your data science, your curiosity that will, you know, there are so many ways you can do it. Just like, as we said, you, it's not a lesson. We don't give you exactly what you would explore. we we'll just only give you what you will do, but uh, interpretation and everything will be up to you. You know, how much you can, you are able to extract, it's up to you. We don't ask you exactly how to extract this. We just ask you, here is the data so much information some are global some are you know like mostly uh filtered 
and what you observe you know how are the differences what are the hashtags whatever you know you basically have to get used to the the hang of analyzing a twitter data and this was collected yesterday so basically you would know it's the most latest data that that you are working on okay and so basically just you have the data and in the team it's already described you know everest and mary are um in the training ops uh mariam sorry actually um and then in the tutoring, you have me, Anastasia, Azaria, EDDI, and Nardos, uh, and then in the tech site, I think either Abdullah or someone else will help you. So the instructions are very the most you have to follow, just so that you know you do because the uh, submissions depend on the instructions. Okay, so far it's uh, the general framework, and in the instructions, you basically we give you some instructions, a minimum to complete. It doesn't mean that you only have to do that. If you can't just do, as I said earlier. If the you know show demonstrate anything that you can okay if you especially have experience but if you don't have experience follow the guideline because they would give you exactly just the outline and we would evaluate you based mostly based on that uh, but if you also do more work we would see it and we are you know we kind of credit you for that as well but you know follow the instructions as close as possible read them uh, and make sure you understand everything by today maybe even by the next couple of hours that you exactly understand every instruction. But with the first part is in the Python programming continuous integration, you basically have to clone uh, or kind of, um, you know, based on a template, you know, you, you just have to create your GitHub uh, repository based on the uh, template we give you. And then you would write new codes as well as also fix bugs because that code as currently given is not working, but you will be able to um, fix bugs when you find or write a small code and also complete the unit tests and basically you would then while doing that you would follow the best practices in software development that means you are not going to work on the main main being the production in this case you're not going to work on the production but you create branches and github and you basically have to uh, do as if you are in a team because if you are working in a team you know someone is working that someone is working that there will be conflict to avoid that there are concepts in software development that means in the git sense it is pull request so that basically one branch requests a pull and then the person who's maintaining the production code in this case the main again yourself a different version of you uh, will then check if there are conflicts they will fix and then they will then accept when that happens there are probably unit tests that are already checks for inconsistency of the code and that runs automatically and if the code fails then it will, it will tell you okay sure you know the code in some way merges to nicely but the unit test, the new code breaks the, you know, the thing. Usually you will stop from merging when that happens. That means you don't request, you don't accept the pull request. Accepting a pull request means you merge the two data. But in this case, when you see that the automatic review, you know, uh, test has failed, you basically would have to tell that developer, in this case yourself again, you know, please fix that one and until they fix. So that will keep, you know, that's why globally Google doesn't break, Facebook doesn't break. Twitter doesn't break. Many of them doesn't don't break because even if they develop new features, new features, they have tests, many type of tests. One of them is unit test. That means each code is tested, uh, as well as also different codes that put together to do something are also tested using using uh, integration tests, as well as also functional tests. Some of the functions are also uh, tests, and there are different type of tests. So that's what you're going to be practicing. So this is much more of software development track. And then the data engineering level one, that's basically now, that was more on the code space, okay? You know, what is different between software developers and machine learning engineers, data engineers, or data science is that we not only work on code, code is one. So that means we have to really act like uh, software developers. We have to version codes, but also we have data as one element. And that you have to also version it just like you version. That means when was it changed, you know, when it's transformed, if you want to go back, you know, to a previous version, whatever, you still should be able to. Because in a team, think of it, not, not one person, but many thousands of people working, that's just important. So there is also a very similar kind of the Git that you would have for data as well. So you would set up validity pipeline, you will set up data versioning using DBT, uh, sorry, using, um, uh, uh, a method, um, I think it's just uh, DVC, and then also kind of how you design database schemas just so that 
you 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 host clean data that is used usually for trading in a feature store and then you have one data science level one so that was much more on the data set but unfortunately machine learning engineers data engineers and and data scientists usually deal with another third component so the first component is code the second component is data the other component is what sometimes you call artifacts which means basically models your model right you have to also deal with 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 models you have to just treat them the models as, as same as um you know same as just uh code as well they have to be virgin they have to be you know if you want to go back to a previous code you know to previous model you should be able and that's why you have this ml ops pipeline uh first is understanding exploration but also the ml ops pipeline okay and then after that all so this is the three components you have to be aware of that means data what sometimes is called code versioning data versioning and model versioning okay and then uh, you will also that the last task you have is that you will write you will write all of your understanding into a medium blog and uh, also you will set up basically a dashboard uh, to help you okay so each of these tasks are further break down you know you, you have much more detail so that it is easier for you to just follow it so here is a template that you would have to um, use and create uh, your repository and after that you'll be able to basically uh, do some of the things and some of the tasks that are that are essential minimum that you have to do is that after create you know you create after that you download and extract the necessary data and put it in the data directory you know um, but remember that the data is large when it's un un unzipped and you should not put it into you should not track it in git otherwise it will really be a problem for you and then but and then the first thing to start is that you create a branch called bug fix and then you fix the code and you know you basically just have to do using some git or git commands uh you transform basically you rename them as well as also you fix you fix them uh, because they don't work as, as they are so that basically shows you you have to be able to read codes other people's codes and and work on them update them and basically like that um you push your you know whenever you work you push in that part and then you merge the branch that you created uh, and then you create a new branch testing for testing to fix also the code in the testing and then after completing that you would basically just the first day is done you know the first task so and you know that uh, github actions you should be you should have there and they will automatically run as every time you 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 kind of push or uh, you are asking for pull request and then task two in the data science workflow and engineering pipeline you do again exactly you know you do some data consistency checks data pre-processing step and um feature store you would you, you would just do it with your choice of sql or no sql database and then data exploration and visualization and ml training and validation and then the deployment uh, using streamlit and you would basically can choose model performance you would also try to understand a data drift a data drift usually means let's imagine you train a model based on the global data in this case without a filter and now let's imagine at some point you really are interested to understand what actually people in Africa are talking. That, you know, that introduces, at first the model was trained on, on the world. Now the data has moved to, you know, a smaller filter. That may introduce some bias. So you basically have to um, understand or at least learn a little bit about that. And in the data science level one, you do data exploration, try to understand what's going on, summarize plot so that you know how are the sentiments of people that means are they positive in the outcome do they think world war three will start you know whatever that uh, you will be able to um, explore the data is small so you have to also know about you know maybe you don't have enough data to make any inference but you still have some kind of you know some evidence from the data that you have and then you build a dashboard using streamlit again here um, more guide is given and then in the task five you would set up ml ops pipeline uh, that is basically um, also here just a guideline so it you know the tutorials there will be tutorials on them so you'll be able to know what they are if you don't know you know don't don't be scared um, just you will get the hang of it people will give you you know the tutorials will help you so just just stick with it 
And then you basically finally have to write and communicate your whatever you're finding, the process basically you followed. Okay. And in the the marking rubrics, so we will just look at the amount of work done, quality of presentation, your coding style, the quality of kit commits, completing the required tasks, quality of the report, communication, uh, community contribution, work ethics, and time management. And in each of them, we give you, you know, how much they carry. Um, okay. And the community contribution is 25%. Quality of insight extracted in dashboard design is 25%. And coding and MLA ops pipeline, including you know the data pipeline, all of the data code, and uh, model versioning will end the code writing. The technicality would be fifty percent. Okay, and then the tutorials you will have tutorials on all of the days, and the first one today um, it's just done here. And set up Python programming and software engineering uh, will follow. It's basically just introduction, and then in the afternoon there will be data engineering in, in Twitter data. Um, so, and then in tomorrow, uh, you would have EDA in the stats. So basically in the morning, you will have data science workflow, business understanding and statistical thinking. And then in the afternoon, you will have just some Python things, pandas, matplotlib, scikit-learn and modeling and deployment. And on Wednesday, you will have data science component building. So basically ML ops components, wireframing and analysis, pipeline design, topic modeling and sentiment analysis. And then on the fourth day, you basically will have unit testing and CI implementation with GitHub Actions. And then on the fifth day, uh, on Friday, you will have database technologies, SQL, NoSQL, database schema design and implementation. And then after that, in the afternoon, streamlit uh, based dashboard design and dockerization and building Python package, you will have. As you could see, and then the deliverables every day, you're basically delivering. Today's delivery is really small. You just basically have to do the small thing, which is create your repository and submit it. And that all the requirement is that you basically submit a link. It's not really a lot. Of, basically, it's no work. Just, you know, we don't evaluate anything from today's other than yes or no. Has the person created the repository or not? So, you know, it, because we, we want it to, today to be much more of your mind preparation. So it should just be very simple. Is your If your GitHub it's a pass or fail kind of thing today. If you create it from the template, uh, get, you know, your repository done for today. You then submit that link from the submission perspective. But remember, today is the easiest day. We don't want to overwhelm you. So try to, if you have time after, you, if you do that quickly and, you know, try to work that the ones um, from tomorrow to today as well, because tomorrow will be much, much, much more the intensity gets, gets higher and higher. So tomorrow there will be a one page summary that you are required to submit about your the process that you have followed and a GitHub link that shows that you have fixed the code and you have run some of the things uh, here. So basically task one, you have to submit. Uh, Wednesday, the same, you know, um, you would have another report and the GitHub link, it's the same GitHub link, but if you want actually submit to the, you know, if you used you know, Jupyter Notebook, you can submit just that link. But otherwise, just submit exactly the same link uh, as you submitted before. It's just for completeness. Um, but don't use only one GitHub repository for all the work from Monday to the whole this week. Just use one because we are using automatically. We are um, seeing how much commits, whatever you have, and everything from that same um, link that you submitted. So work on that. And then Thursday, you would have entry submission and Friday, um, the code again and some of the deployed dashboard, final report, some of the design, and that's it. And then the leaderboard update would be next week, Wednesday, um, and then Friday. Okay, so there would be just those two will be done. And here are the references that, that you need, you know, in different areas in the Twitter analysis, dash database and dashboard design, Python programming, data engineering, version control, CI CD, ML ops, and Python testing all are here and also the tutorials will help you. I know I was fast, but it's just because you have the document, you will check it, okay? Okay, so now we can go into question QA session, if you have anything to ask. Okay, Margaret asked data drift. So on the data drift, it basically means, you know, in, in a real life, let's imagine you, you, you are training, you are following people, right uh, let's say your customers 
And when you start, you really advertise for the whole, let's say you are a Coca-Cola company, you know, and then you're basically assuming everybody would like Coca-Cola, so you advertise them and a lot of people would come and taste, you know, and you would explore how their engagement with your brand, in this case Coca-Cola, you know, whether they like it, where they are eating it. And then over time, people would know that, okay, Coca-Cola is not good for health, maybe. And then you start finding people with actually very, my, you know, health conscious, they might not start consuming. Now your data has been drifting because of, you know, you cannot assume the same as like before, or oh, it's, and I'm, I'm optimizing for everyone. So your model, which was predicting the engagement, for example, of, you know, whether, you know, uh, in a country, an area, let's say in Nairobi, you know, some areas will drink more than others. Now you have to really, you know, the data that I would tell you should now becoming specialized, right? It's like, because the product segmentation, that's all data drift. So the model you built in the beginning might not work later after some time because the people who are actually you are now, um, who are now your clients actually evolved from a general population to a slightly different form, right? Either healthy oriented or, or people who don't care or maybe in the lower, you know, um, kind of in the suburbs or maybe in a city, maybe by in, in maybe mostly female, maybe mostly male, maybe, you know, like that. So the data drift you have to detect. This is the, the most essential component in any data science to identify when the data is drifting so that they can update their model because the model that was working for a general population might not work best for, you know, when the data is kind of evolved to be mostly females you know, or mostly kind of um, suburbs or mostly young, you know, it's like that. So data drift, I hope that's clear. Okay, so, so you will be a manager, you'll be submitting, so there will be a link, a Google uh, class link that is shared, that will be shared in Slack, that you'll basically be able to um, submit through that. And all the deadline time for every task is again specified in the, in the um, basically that is here, when you have to submit is given here. Deliverables. Uh, okay, the the time we have to we will specify the time. Sorry, it's um, it will be specified in this document. It's somewhere must be specified, but it must it will be specified in this time. It's usually, I think there's only one one hour for every of them, and it's usually eight a eight p.m. UTC. But uh, they will they will let you know. But that that time is so also in the Google class. The time is specified. The red line it will be clear. Um, at what time the daily session start? It's earlier it starts, I think it's at 8, 8 a.m. UTC. It starts, yes. Um, yeah, if anyone has any question. If not, I think, you know, it has been long since the beginning, but okay, no. You can go and ask. No, if you want, you have raised your hand, you can ask. Okay, hopefully it's clear. Or is there another hand? Uh, Mainga? Hey, uh, good morning and good afternoon, depending uh, from where you are. I'm actually grateful for this. Uh, I'm just uh, 
I don't want to say I'm intimidated by this old thing. Uh, I think it's my first time to start working with uh, something to do with uh, machine learning, data science. And so my question is, uh, you said uh, earlier on, the previous uh, session that we had, you say that we should not, uh, we should not uh, strive to, to understand everything. Is, is, that, that, is that what you, you said earlier? Uh, I mean, we, yeah, we need to... I mean, it's, it's very hard to understand everything in one go. You know, it's a repetition. You know, if some people can understand, can get names immediately. Some people, they, it needs to has, you know, it needs to be repeated. And our model is that some of, most of these things that you would see here over time would be repeated, and then you would get used to it. It just becomes like another thing that you got you you knew. Persistence is hard, so persist. I think the most important part is to deal with your own frustration is going to be what you will learn a lot more um, but i think you know if you, if you have what it takes you don't have i think for most people i would say probably for more than 70 percent of the people here most of the things or one or many of them in the challenge document will be new to them even those who really has been doing you know machine learning engineering in their own or they have taken some courses before, this will be, I, I bet, for almost for everyone, some one thing will be new, almost for 100%. It's gonna be very hard at your time, at your age, for some of them to be always, to be familiar with everything. So it's expected, but you know, that's the thing. People just get used to it. And that's what's kind of, when we say that we believe in the talents that, you know, we have seen it over and over and it's okay. But dealing with it is much more of, you know, your your homework. Dealing with your not knowing, dealing with your not having clear idea, dealing with not, you know, yeah, it's going to be a much more personal journey. So use the opportunity of the community to help you, calm you, and you know, keep calm and move on, and kind of persist and and, and do. Okay, thank you. Okay, Johannes. You want to honest? If you want a question, if you have a question, you can. Okay, Gannet. Okay, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for the explanation you did. Uh, my question is, there is a daily report which is submitted. Is there any procedure we are following or are writing just yeah. so, so yeah that's a good question Gannett. Uh, so there is so the think of it that you are every day writing such that at the end it's going to be a blog it will make your life very easy so that means if you think of your final blog that you're going to write and your final blog is to explain to people the essential things you have noticed, the daily, including if you want, just the challenge, you know, the technicalities you learn. Some of, maybe summarize a little bit of some of the blog that you read yourself, some of the concept, new concepts you learn. Just write all that. Basically, the, the guideline is just that you would have to explain the process. So in that way, you know, if you write it as more like, you know, the, in, a, in some way, the data or whatever component that you're working on write the section about it what it is you know how does it relate with the previous with the one yesterday uh, today for example maybe write about what the challenge you in your own way what are you trying to do you know what is the, the kind of the plan you're going to follow and then write that and so usually we ask one or two pages in every day but then ultimately if you write it nicely section by section instead of the same thing saying like today i have done that 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 that's also fine, but it will not help you. It will really help you if you write, if you basically consider your, every day you are writing one or a few section of your blog. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you so much. 
Okay. Johannes, if you have the question. Yes, yes, I do have. Thank you. Can you hear me? We can, yes, I can hear you now. We can hear you now. Yeah, my question is regarding the 10x system. Yeah. Uh, you are totally talking about us, uh, talking about that. So how can we interact with the system or how are we supposed to feed the system the information? Yeah, you will be given a login. So the you okay. know, 10x.tenacademy.org is a system. You'll be given uh, a login and you'll be able to log in. All right, thank you. Okay. Awesome. And I think, you know, it's going to be exciting. Don't be intimidated. It is intimidating at first look. If I were in your side, I can tell you I would be intimidated. And the only thing that if I think of I am in your side, the only thing I would like to to be is that to not be intimidated, to find the courage and the kind of, you know, whatever way of thinking that I have to be able to feel like, okay, great. People have done it already. I'm sure they are not lying that people who have even not didn't go to a, a software, whatever, you know, didn't program that much, but they came in and they succeeded and they got a job. So, you know, it's definitely true that when I look at it from my own angle, it may look com completely different, but people tell you, okay, it's dark, but move, you know, there's no stamp, you know, there's nothing to stop you, even if you don't see it. And it's just about that trust and you go on and you move on and then you, know, you will not fail. So then you will learn, oh, okay, great. Then you see that the light of the day and then you feel like, oh, that was, that was awesome. You know, so I think find your version of looking like that, you know, getting the, the kind of, you know, go for a ride for a week, you know, that against all, all odds, your opinion says that differently, this is intimidating and your other self would just say like, okay, you know, but other people have done it. So what is different for me, I'm definitely gonna, and that dialogue with yourself and then really keep up, keep up, you know, and every time just think everything is just more of a strategy and it's more of, you know, walking along some, some, some road um, that it's probably unfamiliar for at first, but then it will get familiar. So find, find that viewpoint. Yeah. So the developer Twitter is basically to get, a, if you get, you know, if you get some, uh, the developer accounts, it's basically they allow you just to get API keys, then you'll be able to download the data yourself. I mean, it's just everybody in the, most people in the past, we had actually requirement the first week of the, the actually 12 weeks are also on actually you get the data yourself, not us. So that means you will be able to download not just only 130 megabytes, but so much so that the information. So if you have done that, for example, and if you want to write, you know, like a really a good blog that talks about how Africans see the China, Taiwan, US relationship and what it means politically, and you want to contribute that knowledge, you know, the data that we gave you might be small. But with, if you have, if you can download it yourself, then it should be easy. I think the code we provide you might have something like that or might not have, but you can find in the web, there are many ways, you know, once you have the account, you can download yourself a lot. Um, so that's for that. Uh, Josias, okay, Brahanu. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Abubal. Uh, regarding about uh, data, I think there are two data sets there. Uh, which one we will use and uh, we can uh, get uh, we can use in, within the GitHub. Is there we use the sample from that, or we can uh, just put uh, push all the the all the data? That's my yeah. Question. So don't don't push data to the Git. That that would really because Git is for versioning code, not data. That data is large for Git. You know, codes usually are in kilobytes, and the data is in megabytes. It's gonna be you're gonna struggle. Don't push. Just work only on only use git for your version of the, the code and you can you can basically you know it's the same like you can use one the global one or you can combine them if you want to um, but it's to demonstrate i think as in the guideline you will see that you would develop one model and you test it on another one you know you can use it as much more of like okay you develop something on the global uh, think the global one might include also the ones from Africa, right? So 
it's there may be overlap but then you would develop that and then you would just say okay you know if i now would look into just only some filtered one is my model performing but for for all other reasons you can combine them if you want to okay thank you okay great let's stop here i think questions are also answered but you know we will we will have just lots of tutorials over time so hopefully go over it start discussing in uh, okay michaela do you have okay uh sorry for being late to ask uh thank you for the opportunity actually did not a question i need uh, to make uh, something sure yeah. i think in a previous uh, session you say uh, all the work should be in one repository am i right yes in week zero all the repository all the uh, the work should be in in uh, one repository. Yes, all of your work should be in one repository, just the one that you would create today. Okay. okay. And even Thank just you. if you look at task one, it will tell you like, name it like that as a suggestion. You can name it whatever you want, but just okay. for consistency, okay. you can also name it and then use that repository for all your work. In, in week okay. Thank you. No worries. Okay, pleasure and great. So that is all and welcome again and happy, you know, happy working. And today the submissions are not that much, so you can relax, but learn as much as you can uh, and get yourself comfortable. Awesome. So Ten Academy team, you may, you may stop it, recording and have a good afternoon, everyone. Bye.